Okay, welcome again. I'm Robert Breaker, and uh, this is 2019. It's hard to believe we're already in a new year. So I thought, well, let's start this year out right by preaching the message of salvation, the most important message in the entire Bible, how to be saved. So what we're going to do today, we're going to start on um, Paul's message. So if you get your Bible out, uh, we're going to start today in Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to look at the Apostle Paul and why he's in the Bible. I, I still to this day get phone calls, emails, regular mail from people who say, Now Mr. Breaker, you claim to be a preacher and you think you know the Bible, but you are so wrong because all you do is you run to Paul and you think Paul should be in the Bible. And many people tell me, Paul is not who we are to follow today. Paul should not be in the Bible. Uh, I've heard from many people who who say they went to a church and then the church seemed to be alright but after a while the pastor would get up and say well Paul shouldn't be in the Bible so from now on we will never preach from the Apostle Paul there's nothing in Paul for us today we don't want Paul and, and you look at this and you say what is this this hatred of the Apostle Paul why are people so against Paul today and so let's look at that today we're gonna go through the Bible we're gonna look at who Paul is we're gonna try to understand Paul. We're going to start out with three questions. Who was Paul? Why is Paul in the Bible? And what did Paul preach? Then we're going to look at Paul's message. And it's so important today that we understand the Apostle Paul. Why he's in the Bible. There is a reason for Paul being in the Scriptures. <laughs> a lot of people today, they don't want Paul. And the reason, I find it so sad but also so interesting, the reason that they refuse Paul is because Paul doesn't line up with their doctrine. So rather than understand the Bible, read the Bible, you know, Paul says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rather than studying the Bible to see why their doctrine doesn't line up with Paul, they say, well, all we're going to do is just throw him out because we don't understand him. Well, you're doing that to your own detriment. You're going to have some problems, big problems, if you get rid of the Apostle Paul. So you have something that you need to do, and what you need to do is you need to understand why Paul is in the Bible. Because the message that Jesus Christ gave to Paul is the message for us today. And if you don't get that, you're going to miss salvation. I cannot stress that enough. Paul's message is the gospel of salvation, the message of how to get to heaven. And if you take that out, that's it's our message for today then you are getting away from the way of salvation and getting eternal life. So it's very sad to see many, many churches, many different denominations, many different preachers today turning against Paul. And Paul's the one that told us to study, 2 Timothy 2.15, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So today, as clear as I possibly can, I want to show you why the Apostle Paul is in the Bible. I want you to understand who Paul is, how he was indeed called of God in order to preach something. Uh, I even heard some people uh, on YouTube, they, they make videos and they say, Paul was a liar, and he even says in the Bible, you shouldn't listen to him because he's a liar. <laughs> and they go to these passages and they twist them, anything they can do to get rid of the Apostle Paul. And that's a shame. So we're going to look at this today. So we're going to begin today with Philippians chapter 3, verse 5 through 9. And the first question is, who is Paul? Philippians 3, 5 through 9. Paul is speaking. He wrote the book of Philippians to the church in Philippi. And he says, Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So before he was saved, he was a Pharisee. But he was a Jew. He was born a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin. Verse 6, Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. What a thing to say. He says, look, I did everything the law told me to do. Now we know he's a sinner. He says it in another place, but he's a sinner. But he's kind of saying, look, I really did believe in that Old Testament law and did everything I possibly could to follow that Old Testament law. And then he says, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Verse 8, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. He says, look, I'm not bragging on my keeping the law. Because Paul tells us later, it's not the law that saves us. He says, look, it's all what Jesus did. I don't hold on to my own righteousness. 
Verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So the Apostle Paul's message is all about we're made righteous not by what we do, rather by what Jesus has done for us. When Jesus, oh, he died on that old cross, and he shed his blood. I don't know why my red markers like to go out. But the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on the cross for our sins. And so Jesus shed his precious blood. So Paul's message is all about what Jesus did and not what we do to get to heaven. And he even said, look, if anybody kept the law, I did. I did my best to keep the law, Paul says. But he says, I look at what I did trying to keep the law as nothing. Nothing compares to what Jesus did. So we're going to go today, we're going to look more at this, and I want to show you why Paul, for some reason they're not working, why Paul is in the Bible. Oh wow, what are the odds? I think the devil hates the blood of Jesus, amen. So my red marker doesn't want to work here, but that's okay, that's okay. Maybe I'll buy some more red markers here pretty soon. Look at that, pink, pink, pink instead of red. So the blood of Jesus Christ is what saves us. There we go. So there we go. There's finally a good red marker. So a lot of people say, Brother Breaker, I want to see you put the blood up there. Because what we're going to see today is that Paul's message is, it's all about the blood of Jesus. The importance of the blood of Jesus Christ. So who was Paul? Well, Paul was a Jew who got saved. He was a guy who was under the Old Testament law. But he realized that the law didn't save you. It's Christ that saves you. And he got saved from that it understood the true gospel of salvation now the question arises why is Paul in the Bible a lot of people to this day they just do not understand why Paul is in the Bible and so we go to the Bible itself to find the answer and the Bible is found in Romans chapter 15 Romans chapter 15 of course this is written by Paul and by the way Paul wrote Romans through Philemon he also wrote the book of Hebrews he wrote probably two-thirds of the entire New Testament so to take Paul out of your Bible is to cut two-thirds out of the New Testament. He said he didn't write two-thirds. Well, he's in the book of Acts also. And you know, two-thirds, th actually almost three-fourths of the book of Acts is written about Paul. So Paul, 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 all throughout the New Testament. To get rid of Paul is to get rid of your New Testament. Because ta Paul is the one that even tells us what the New Testament is. The death of the cross is what starts the New Testament. So the New Testament starts by the death of Christ. We wouldn't know that if we didn't have the book of Hebrews that Paul wrote. So it's about Paul. Now look at Romans chapter 15. Paul tells us the difference between his ministry and Jesus' ministry. In Romans 15, 8, Paul tells us what Jesus' ministry was for. It says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, and he came to do some things. He came to bring a promise to the fathers, which would be the Jews. God made a promise to Abraham, and Jesus came to fulfill that promise to those Jews. And what did they do? They rejected him. They rejected their Messiah. So God said, okay, well, let's take to the Gentiles the message of salvation instead. If the Jews don't want to be saved, well, I'll save some Gentiles. Now, verse 16, look at what Paul says his ministry is. Romans 15, 16, Paul says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So Paul says, look, Jesus Christ came, he was preaching to the Jews. I come, God told me he wanted me more to be the preacher to the Gentiles, to minister the gospel unto them so that some Gentiles could get saved. So Paul says he was in the Bible more to be used of God as a minister to the Gentiles. And a matter of fact, that's what he says he was in Romans chapter 11 and verse 13. Paul says in Romans 11, 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. There were 12 disciples, or 12 uh, apostles. One of them was a devil, Judas. He died. Now, the early church, they chose Matthias, but we don't see in the Bible that it says God chose him. So, I've often wondered if God accepted Matthias or not. Because Paul says he was an apostle, and he was one born out of due season. So, clearly, God chose Paul as the 12th apostle. And so, Paul is an apostle, and he says he's an apostle to the Gentiles. So, who was Paul? He was a Jew. He was a Pharisee before he got saved. Why is he in the Bible? He's, he's, he's in the Bible with a message that is more to Gentiles. Now, 
Can Jews get saved today? We'll see this here a little bit later. Yes, a Jew can be saved today, but it must come through. He must come through Paul's uh, teaching and Paul's gospel. Now, what did Paul preach? Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse uh, 16. Romans 1, 15. Well, let's look at verse 15 first. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. And then he goes on a little bit more. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So he, he preached the gospel. He preached the gospel of Christ. He preached the gospel of the grace of God. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation, verse 16, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So this is the saving gospel for today, for both Jew and Gentile. Even though he said, I'm more to the Gentiles, you cannot read the book of Acts without seeing Paul going to the Jews first, trying to win them to the Lord. So what did Paul preach? He preached the gospel. What is the gospel? We'll look at that a little bit later here in this teaching, but I just wanted to answer those three questions before we continue. Who was Paul? He was a Jew. He was called by God. Uh, you, you look at the beginning of, of each of his uh, letters or epistles, and it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separate into the gospel of God. That's Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul is called of God. So who is Paul? He's a God-called man to come to preach a message for us today. Why is Paul in the Bible? He's there to bring the new message, a message that's more for Gentiles because the Jews has, has rejected, but what did he preach? He preached that his message, his gospel, is for both Jew and Gentile, so Jews can be saved today. So that's what Paul is and who he is and why he's in the Bible. Should he be in the Bible? Of course. He's called by God to be an apostle. Now, we go to the book of Acts, and we are studying now the book of Acts. We're going verse by verse through Acts. If you get a chance, go to thecloudchurch.org and look up my verse by verse Bible study and learn with us as we're going through the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a transitional book. The book of Acts starts out with Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus' ministry was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And as we go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we find that Jesus says these words about his ministry in Matthew chapter 15. Jesus said that when he came and his earthly ministry, he said it was only for Jews. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now if you know your Bible, what happened? Jesus Christ came. Jesus had his ministry for three and a half years. And what did the Jews do? The Jews rejected Jesus. They rejected their Messiah. What did they do? They crucified him. So this is their crucifying Jesus Christ. This is a rejection of their Messiah. So Jesus had three and a half years in his ministry in which he was preaching only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's all written about the time that Jesus was in this ministry to the Jews. And it's all Old Testament until Jesus actually dies on the cross. Now, what is he telling the Jews? He's telling them, hey, believe in me. Trust in me. I am the Messiah. I am the promised seed. I am the promise that has been given by God to you. And the Jews said, no, we don't want you. So he dies. He's buried. He's risen again. And then the early book of Acts, as you go through the book of Acts, you clearly see a transitional book. The first seven, eight Nine chapters of the book of Acts are only for Jews and the Jewish nation. You clearly see this. A lot of people, they get messed up in false doctrine by not rightly dividing the word of truth. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 12 is the day of Pentecost. And here come together these, these apostles, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in tongues. And the Bible tells us what tongues are. It's a written, spoken language. <laughs> It says in verse 8, And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. In verse 9, and verse 10, verse 11 tells what tongues they were. Uh, there are a lot of people today that they want to apply this today. They call themselves Pentecostals. They say, we speak in tongues. And you go, oh, which, which, uh, which language do you speak in? Parthian or Mede or Elamite? Uh, do you speak Cappadocian or Pontius or Asian? Uh, do you speak uh, Phrygia or Pamphylia or Egyptian? I mean, it's all listed here. And they say, no, I speak in an unknown tongue. And you say, well, 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 okay, translate it. Oh, we don't need to translate. They, they don't understand the Bible, so they're, they're a little messed up on their doctrine. Because they don't understand that this is for the Jews. And as you read Acts chapter 2, you go through it, you clearly see the message is Peter preaching 
And look at verse 14, for example. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. And so as you read, verse 29. Men and brethren, let them free. And so as you read the book of Acts, you clearly see in the book of Acts, Peter and the early apostles only going to Jews. So everything that's taking place in the early book of Acts is the message of this preaching. I call it the Apostles' Doctrine. I've got a good YouTube video on the Apostles' Doctrine. So you're going through the book of Acts and you clearly see that the early book of Acts is only for Jews. And so people try to take that and apply that to us today and say, the early book of Acts applies to us. And they say, guess what? Acts 2.38 is for us today. What happened in Acts 2.38? Well, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so what happened? They, they took them down, they dunked them, and they baptized them, and they got the Holy Spirit. Is that the plan of salvation today? I still get emails from people that say, Well, Robert Breaker, that's how we get the Holy Spirit today. We're baptized in water. And I say, um, I'm sorry, but do you, do you read your Bible? Because that's not Paul's message. You see, the Bible begins here in Acts with Jews, and that was the way that the Jews got the Holy Spirit in the early book of Acts. But as you continue, up shows Paul. And Paul says, now it's this way. Now you say, now Brother Breaker, I, I can't believe that. Okay, you need to read your Bible. The Bible says that the book of Acts is a transitional book. And it says that it starts out with the Jews, and then it ends up with Paul going to the Gentiles. Now, you do not have to read very far in the book of Acts to see this. Acts chapter 1. Jesus Christ has just risen from the dead, and he's been there, verse 3, for 40 days. And now he's going up to heaven, and he's caught up in a cloud, verse 9. But before he goes up, look at what Jesus Christ says in verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So Jesus Christ says, look, over here was a guy named John, and he practiced water baptism. And the early apostles, Acts 2.38, well, they, they baptized with water. But Jesus says, look, that was water baptism, but there'll be another baptism in the future, the Holy Spirit baptism. So Acts 2.38, they were baptized in water to receive the Holy Spirit. Nobody receives the Holy Spirit by water baptism today. Because Paul's message is Ephesians 1.13. And according to Paul's message in Ephesians 1.13, we receive the Holy Spirit today by faith. So there is definitely a change in the book of Acts. And it's from water baptism to get the Holy Spirit to receiving the Holy Spirit by faith only. Now you say, well, Brother Breaker, I, okay, let's go to... Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, this is the very first time that we see a Gentile saved in Acts chapter 10. And Peter is preaching to this Gentile, Acts chapter 10, and he says in verse 43, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Verse 44, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. They got the Holy Spirit by believing, not by the water baptism. And you know what Paul says in chapter 11? Chapter 11 is, I said Paul, Peter says, chapter 11 is Peter speaking about what took place in chapter 11. And look what he says in Acts chapter 11, verse 15. Acts 15, As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. And then I remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So in uh, Acts 1 5 Jesus Christ says now remember Peter there's this water baptism and you'll get the Holy Spirit by the water baptism John baptized in water but there's a more important baptism coming up and that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit I'll use purple here because you know purple is the color of royalty this is the Holy Spirit baptism that is spoken of by Jesus and we get the Holy Spirit today not by water baptism we do not get baptized in water like Acts 2.38 and then come up all of a sudden we got the Holy Spirit. That's not the way it happens. The book of Acts is a transitional book and we clearly see the transition from Jews to Gentiles, from Peter to Paul, from water baptism to receive the Holy Spirit to receiving the Holy Spirit by faith, from Israel to the church. 
So there's so many things going on in the book of Acts. And this is the problem. A lot of people fall into false doctrine because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They don't study. They don't even read the entire book. And they want to say, no, we're still back over here in chapters 1 through 9. No, no, we're not. We're over here in chapters 10 to 28, and we're under Paul's ministry, according to the Apostle Paul. Now, up until this time, the message was believe in Jesus, or on Jesus, and believe that he's the Messiah. And what Paul does is Paul comes along, Paul gets saved in chapter 9, and, and I'll, I'll explain that here in a minute, but before Paul is saved, the book of Acts does not preach what Paul preaches in the beginning. There is a distinctly different message in the early book of Acts than there is from the message of Paul in the later book of Acts. Now that's not hyper-dispensationalism, that's just reading the book. Reading the book of Acts. I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. You simply read the book of Acts, you see that Acts 2.38 is very different than Acts 16. Because Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, a guy says, What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall, you'll be saved. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Over here, it's get water baptized. So it's all about the water in the early book of Acts, and the water to receive the Holy Spirit. Here we receive the Spirit through faith when we believe. Now they got baptized in water afterwards, a lot of people, but they already had it when they believed. So it's not the same. And so the early book of Acts, the emphasis, because it's for Jews, is the preaching of who Jesus is. Uh, Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. Just give you some examples. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, uh, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise, rise up and walk. Verse 16, And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. You see, it was all about trusting in the name of Jesus in the early book of Acts. What's so important about the name of Jesus? Well, his name is Jesus. Jesus is a compound word. The word Jesus, J, is short for Jehovah, and Seuss is saves. So Israel, you can still be saved by Jehovah if you'll accept this man as your Messiah. And what did Israel as a nation do? They said, we don't want him as our Messiah, we reject him. So the early book of Acts is still, Jews accept the Messiah, Jews accept the Messiah. Uh, verse 30 of Acts chapter 4. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and the signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Um, let's go to 4, seven, Acts chapter 4 and verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel. It's still dealing with Israel, the early book of Acts. And verse um, Verse 10, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's like the name, whom you have crucified, that God raised him from the dead, even by the, him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at not of the builders, which to, is become the head of the corner. Who, what is he saying? Well, the prophecy is of that being the Messiah. He's saying this is the Messiah. Verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given, whereby you must be saved. So as you're going through the early book of Acts, it's all about the name of Jesus. Acts 5.42, look at what it says. And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Well, when they're preaching Jesus Christ, what are they saying? Jesus is the Christ. And the, Je the, the Jehovah saves. The Christ, the Jehovah, the Messiah, can save Israel if we still accept him and who he is. Acts 8.37, look what that says even all the way up into Acts 8.37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So it's all about the name of Jesus. It's all about believing that Jesus is the Son of God. What is that? That's God's Son. That He's the Lord. That He's the Christ. That He's the Messiah. This was the early message of the book of Acts. As Israel had a chance to still get their Messiah. And I like to call this the who message. This is what the message of the early book of Acts is to Israel. Believe who Jesus is. Believe that he's your Messiah. Now, Paul has a different message a little bit. 
Paul's message focuses in more on what Jesus did. And I'm going to show you that in the book of Acts quickly. Because you need to get a hold of this message of Paul. Alright, so let's go now to Paul. Paul gets saved in Acts chapter 9. The man who would be the future apostle to the Gentiles. Well, after he gets saved, the first thing he does, he starts preaching to Jews the message that he just heard. Which is what? Acts chapter 9 and verse 20. And straightway he, who's that? Paul, preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So he's preaching this early message that's a Jewish message to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Look at uh, verse um, 22. And after that, uh, but, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this was what? That this is very Christ, the very Christ. So he was preaching who Jesus was to Jews, that he is the Christ. And Jews, you killed your Messiah. The Christ, the Messiah, the one sin of God. Even verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him into the apostle and declared to him how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he spoken to him and how he had preached boldly in Damascus in the name of Jesus. Now as Paul continues, Paul's message begins to change. And the book of Acts clearly teaches that Paul was given something by God and he began to preach what he was given from God. Alright, so I hope you get where we are right now. The early book of Acts is Jews preaching to Jews. And the main thrust of their message was, Jews, you missed it. You missed the Messiah. He came and you did not receive him. You killed him. If you will believe in his name, believe that he's the Christ, believe in who Jesus is, that's what you Jews need to do. And when Paul got saved in Acts chapter 9, that's the same message that he preached. Then Paul goes out on his own and begins preaching, and Paul starts preaching something a little bit different. And when he does, the question arises, now is Paul right? Is this really right, what Paul is preaching? What is the message? Well, Acts chapter 13, Paul goes out on his first missionary journey with Barnabas. And in Acts chapter 13, all right, this is so important. Acts 13, verse 38 and verse 39. There's a three-point message that Paul preaches that you find here and you say, well, wow, that's different from the rest of the book of Acts. What were these three points that Paul preaches? Well, let's go look. Acts chapter 13. Now, you've got to get a hold of this. Because there are so-called denominations, Christians, they call themselves Christians. They call themselves a Christian denomination. They are so-called because they are not preaching this message. And yet, this is the message of Paul for salvation. And you need to get this if you want to be saved. If you don't understand this or believe this, and you say Paul shouldn't be in the Bible, you're rejecting the message of God through Paul for us, for salvation. I want you to get a hold of that. What is the message that Paul preached? Acts chapter 13, verse 38 and 39. Paul says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, he's still preaching about Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe, he does not say baptism of water gives you the Holy Spirit. He says when you believe, you are justified from all things by which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So there's a three-point message that Paul begins to preach. That forgiveness of your sins comes through Jesus Christ. How? By believing, by faith. And he says that you're justified. Now he starts with this word, justified. This is the first time we see the word justified in the entire New Testament. And he said you're justified by faith. And I'm going to add the word alone here because we're going to see a little bit later in Acts chapter uh, 15 when this question is arisen that it's the faith that saves you. It's not the works. Because the very next thing says, he says you not by the law. In other words, it's not by works. Well, that would be why Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and as it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So this is Paul's message. Where did he get it from? Did he learn this from the early apostles? No. Let me show you what Paul says himself. Go to Galatians chapter 1. So Paul begins preaching a message, and he starts preaching, and he goes, Look, Jesus is the one that forgives sins. And how does he forgive sins? We'll see a little bit later that the forgiveness of sins comes through the blood of Christ. 
and through faith in that blood. So Paul's message is all about what Jesus did when he died on the cross for our sins. And he says, look, this message is you're justified by faith. It's not works that saves us. Yet in the so-called Christian community today, there are so many different denominations, and many of those denominations say, oh, but you're saved by keeping the law. Or they say, oh, you're saved by works. And Paul says, you are not saved by keeping the law. You're not justified by the works of the law. You're just saved by faith. You do not get forgiveness based upon what you do, which many, many so-called Christians are thinking today. If I do this, 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 and this, then God will accept me and I can go to heaven because I did all these things. That is not the message of salvation. The message of salvation is the forgiveness of sins comes through Jesus and his shed blood. And by faith in that, not in what you do but what in Jesus did for us. So where did Paul get this message? Did he just pull it out of his hat? Just make it up? Well, no. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, Paul says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel, the word gospel is good news. That's what good news, uh, the word gospel means is good news. He said, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which I preach is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, Jesus revealed this to me, that it's not works, that it's faith alone, that we are forgiven through what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? He shed his blood. So it's through the blood atonement of Christ that we get forgiveness of sins. Not what we do. Not works. By faith. It's by faith. Go to uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Paul says that when he started to preach this message that God gave him of salvation through faith alone, without works, by grace through faith, saved by the blood atonement of Christ, trusting in what Jesus did, not what we do, he said, look what I had to do. Chapter 2 of Galatians says, Then 14 years later, after I went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. And he says there, verse 4, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. What's the bondage? Try to get them back under the Old Testament law. He says, verse 5, To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So Paul says, there's a gospel that God gave me that is the way of salvation. God showed me something that I did not learn from men, something that God gave me. And he says, now this thing that God gave me is what I was told to preach. All right, so now, what happens in the book of Acts? Well, Paul says this in Acts chapter 13. All right, in Acts chapter 15... There are some people that had believed in Jesus, but they still thought they were under the law. And they came along and they said, well, wait a minute. Paul's saying one thing, and you guys are saying something else. You're saying just believe in Jesus, but you're telling us we can still be under the law. Or, or at least they hadn't said you're not under the law anymore. So there are some people that got saved that were Jews by believing who Jesus was, and they said, now what about this question of do we keep the law or not? So Acts chapter 15 is about that. Acts chapter 15, verse 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. They are saying the law saves. And keeping the law, doing the works of the law, is the way to be saved. That's what they taught. And they were telling people, you must keep the law to keep your salvation. Oh, sure, you can just believe in Jesus, but it's by faith and works. So if you'll do the works, then you'll stay saved. That's not the gospel for today. That is not justification by faith alone. And so it says here, verse 2, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So the apostle Paul says, look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go all the way back to Jerusalem and meet up with all the early apostles, and I'm going to tell them, God told me to preach this. And I want to know what you think. Do you think that this is the right message? Or are we under the works of the law to be saved? And that's what chapter 15 of the book of Acts is all about. What happens? Well, Peter stands up and Peter starts, starts talking. And what does Peter say? Peter says, verse 9, 
Hey, well, well, actually, he's talking about verse 8, how God bear witness when he saw the Gentiles saved in chapter 10 and put the Holy Ghost in them. And verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God, verse 10, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Talking about the law. Verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. So the whole question brought up is, how are we saved? Are we saved by works? Or are we saved by grace? Through God's grace, through faith in what Jesus did for us. And the answer resoundingly was, we're saved by grace through faith. It's not works that saves us. It's by faith that we're saved and we receive the Holy Spirit. Now you say, well, why is that so important, Robert Breaker? Because there's a gigantic church in the world today that claims to be the, the Roman church. They say, we are the Holy Mother Church, and we are the true church, and only we have the true doctrine of salvation. And so if you go to that church, and you sit down in that church, you will be told by those people of that church that there's no salvation outside of their church, and that according to them, salvation is through following Peter. And you say, okay, what does Peter say to do? What, well, you have to be baptized as a baby or you don't get to heaven. And then as you come to our church, well, you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do... And if you'll do all these works, well, then you might just be saved. And you say, well, what happens when I die? You go to purgatory and you burn. <laughs> and you're like, I don't, I don't want to burn. Why would I want that religion? But that religion says, oh, but, but we follow Peter. No, they don't. If they truly followed Peter, they would have the message that salvation is by faith alone. But the Roman Catholic Church does not believe that salvation is by faith alone. They believe that you must have works, and that it's through your works that you're saved. That is a heresy. They are not reading their Bible. They're not following through. Matter of fact, in the 1500s, there was a guy named Martin Luther. And if you remember history, if you've ever studied church history, I hope to preach on that soon. In the 1500s, Martin Luther came out and said, Well, you know, I'm a Catholic, but our religion's wrong. Because I'm reading the book of Romans and it says we're justified by faith. And our religion, Catholicism, says we're saved by works. He said, I can't go along with this anymore. I've just got to tell the truth. We're saved by faith. Where did he get that? Did he just pull that out of his hat? No, he says, Paul said that. And all he did was simply read the book of Acts. And he said, I got it, I got it, I got it. Paul's in the Bible for a reason. Uh, our church is messed up. The Catholic Church is teaching that it's through works. They're going more to Peter than Paul. Uh, that's wrong. They have a different blood atonement. Theirs is wine in a cup. It's not the true blood of Christ. And so he, he calls to stink about it. And rightly so. Because that religion had gone into apostasy and were not preaching correctly the true gospel of salvation. So what is the gospel message of Paul? That salvation is by grace through faith. It's not works. Forgiveness of sins comes through Christ when your faith is in what it's supposed to be in. And that's when you're saved. You're saved by faith. So the question arises, faith in what? Well, the answer to that question is in Paul's epistles. And Paul clearly, clearly tells us what our faith is to be in in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, uh, look at verse 4. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, in whom we have redemption through His blood, he says in another passage. So salvation is a free gift in which we are justified by faith. By grace. Now verse 25 says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. So salvation, according to the Bible, is by faith in the blood. So when you trust the blood of Jesus Christ, that's Romans 3.25, then you are trusting in what Jesus did. Look at that. What He did for you. And you're saying, I accept that payment on my behalf for my sins, and then you receive the forgiveness of sins when you believe. It's not the works of the law that saves you. Romans 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. It's the blood that saves us and faith in the blood. Uh, verse 11. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Paul's message was all about the blood atonement of Christ. You must receive the atonement through faith. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. The book of Hebrews is clearly the book of Paul. 
because Paul, in the book of Hebrews, writing to the Hebrews, starts out the book, and the entire first seven, eight, nine chapter, however long, is all about who Jesus is, so the Jews might believe that he was their Messiah. Then the last part of the book is all about what Jesus did, as he was the blood sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. Look at what it says there. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. The blood of Jesus Christ obtains eternal redemption for the whole world because Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world. And the way that you receive that forgiveness of sins, because he paid for them, is through faith. And you are justified by faith. Just the, justified is a beautiful word. You can kind of break it up into syllables. Just if I'd. You know what salvation is? When you trust in the blood atonement of Christ and you're saved, in God's eyes, it's like you never sinned. And you can tell someone, it's just if I'd never sinned. I'm justified. Why? It's just as if I'd never sinned. Because he gave me forgiveness when I trusted him. Now, that's not an excuse to go sin some more. <laughs> some people think that. No. Now that I'm saved and forgiven and have eternal life, I want to serve him. So, the Paul's message was Jesus... His shed blood atonement was for our sins, and to be saved it's through faith in the blood. So you trust in that blood atonement of Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Paul's gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Now, if you take Paul out of the gospel, why would you do that? Why would anybody try to take Paul out of the gospel out of the Bible when his message is the message of salvation? The only thing I can figure is that people don't want to believe that it's salvation only by faith. So they'll say, no, 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 can't watch that, can't have that, can't, no, we can't go there. No, it's got to be what we do. So they either try to get you back under the law, or they try to tell you it's by your works. And that's not the message of Paul. He says it's not by works. It's by faith only. So I can see why people hate Paul, because they want to save themselves. They want to have self-righteousness. They want to say, it's all about me and what I do. And Paul says the otherwise, so I better forget Paul because I want to brag on myself. What a dumb thing. Who do you think you are to think you could get to heaven based upon what you do? You're a sinner. You need forgiveness of sins. You cannot save yourself. You must come to Jesus Christ, the Savior, to receive the forgiveness of sins by faith. You receive the atonement through faith. So Hebrews 15, 1 through 4. Excuse me, Hebrews. 1 Corinthians. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul tells us the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Believe in vain means you're believing in something else. You're in your own self, your vanity, or you haven't believed in the gospel through faith alone. 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that how uh, all that which I have also received. How, that is such an important word, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. How did Christ die? Jesus Christ died by shedding his blood on the cross. Paul tells us in Hebrews uh, 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Remission is forgiveness. There can be no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 that Jesus Christ, the one sacrifice of Jesus, one sacrifice forever on the cross, is that one sacrifice that forgives us of all sins. And then it says how, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. So the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. How did he do all that? By shedding his blood. So the Bible says we're saved by believing. Believing in what? Believing in the blood of Christ. It's not the works of the law. Yet there are many so-called denominations within Christianity today, and they all want to tell you, we can't take Paul because he says it's only by faith, and we don't believe that, we believe it's by works. Okay, now I know why you hate Paul, because you don't want to be saved. You don't want Jesus to save you because you're trying to save yourself. It's that simple. Good luck with that, because you're going to end up in hell if you forget, and you omit, and you reject what Jesus Christ did. And I don't want to see you to go there. I'm not preaching this as a message of condemnation. I'm preaching this to try to edify and inform you, hey, if you want to go to heaven, this is the way. And it's Paul's message. It's not anything else. Go with me now to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Let me show you. See, there's some people out there still that say, nope, it's the water baptism, Acts 2.38. 
So if you want to get saved, you have to be baptized in water. No! The book of Acts is a transitional book. We see the change from that to this. And Paul says it's only by believing in the gospel that we're saved. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans 2.16 Look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. Listen, hear, hear, hear. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. You need to hear this. Paul says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Paul says, look, it's my gospel. It's the gospel that God gave to me. What was Paul's gospel? Paul's gospel, he told us, I just read it to you, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And Paul says it's through this gospel, which is how Jesus died. How did he die? He shed his blood. And that it's through faith in the blood that we're saved. So you've got to trust in that shed blood of Jesus Christ. When you trust the blood, you accept the payment made on your behalf by Christ shedding his blood, then you're saved. That's the gospel of Paul. And he says in Romans 2.16 that someday... Someday, God will judge people based upon whether or not they receive that message that God gave to Paul. You see, this isn't a message that Paul made up. We've read the verses. I've shown you in Galatians where he says, Look, the gospel that I preach, man didn't teach me that. It was revealed to me by Jesus Christ. And he told me to go tell the world. Why? Because the world will be judged someday based upon whether or not they have accepted this message of salvation. And if they did not, then they're lost. Let's look at some more verses. Well, how do we know it's Paul's gospel? Well, Paul tells us several times. Look what he says here. In Romans 2.16, he says it's my gospel. In 2 Timothy 2.8, he calls it my gospel. Paul, why does Paul call it my gospel? Because it's the gospel that God revealed to him to preach to the world. And by the way, I believe the early apostles saw that and they began to preach it too. You go to 1 Peter, you see, 1 Peter, For we are not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold, and the vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish, without spot. We are redeemed by the blood of Christ. That's Paul's message. And we clearly see Peter accepting that message and preaching it too. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 8. 2 Timothy 2.8 is the second time that Paul calls it my gospel. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8, Paul says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Now let me show you another one, Romans 16, 25. This gospel is a gospel that God gave to Paul. It's something that God waited to give until a certain time because God was waiting to see if Israel would accept him. And there's some people out there who say, there's no such thing as dispensations. And yet here we see in the Bible a certain gospel revealed to Paul and even dispensed to Paul. Matter of fact, Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 17, the, the dispensation of the gospel. He says a gospel was dispense, dispensed to me. There was a dispensation of the gospel to Paul. God dispense means to give. God gave Paul this preaching for us today. It wasn't preached before, but it's preached now. It is the way of salvation today. God is a God of dispensation. So there are dispensations in the Bible. If you don't get a hold of that, you've got problems. But Romans chapter 16, verse 25, look what it says. Romans 16, 25, the Apostle Paul says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Paul says, this is the gospel that I preach, my gospel. What is it? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's how Christ died. It's his shed blood. It's by faith in the blood. We trust the blood. Then we're justified by faith. Because we receive forgiveness based upon what Jesus did, not what we do, not works. We trust what Jesus did. And he says, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the, the world began. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. We're saved by faith, by believing. Paul says, look, this is the gospel, my gospel that was given by revelation, that, that before was a mystery. Interesting, interesting. Now, Acts chapter 20. I've just got some more verses I want to give you, but I, I want you to get a hold of this. You say, well, Mr. Breaker, if, if what you're saying is true, the majority of those people in the world that call themselves Christians are not even saved. 
That's a sad statement. But I've showed you the scriptures. Paul says, Jesus Christ revealed this to me. I thought about calling this uh, Paul's message or uh, God's revelation to Paul. I thought about naming it God's revelation to Paul. But I thought, well, we'll just stick with the, God, uh, the message thing. We'll call it Paul's message. But the Bible is very clear. Salvation is only by faith. And you receive the forgiveness of sins by believing, by faith, in the blood of Christ, not by the works of the law. Yet we have out there people who claim to be Christians that go around saying, no, you're saved by works. Those are liars. Some of them even say you have to keep the law to be saved. Those are heretics. Those are people that are not preaching the message of Paul. They're not preaching the Bible rightly divided. There are other people out there that say, well, you can, you can believe all this and get saved, but then you have to do works to keep your salvation. Sorry. Paul says it's by faith only. Not by what we do. It's by grace. God's grace through our faith. What Jesus did for us. We trust in that. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. So this is a very grave message, but a very important message. This is the way to be saved. If you don't understand, if you don't get this, if you don't believe this, you're going to be hurting someday at the judgment. Because Paul said, look, I tried to warn you. God's going to ask you, well, what would you do with Paul's gospel? And if you say, well, I never heard it, how do you get saved? The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I'm hoping that this will be the time that you hear it, and this will be the time to get saved. But in Acts 20, 24, what do we read? But none of these things move me, Paul says, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish the course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You see, Paul didn't come along and come on the scene and just start preaching his own thing. Some people today say, Paul shouldn't be in the Bible. He's a liar and deceiver. He hijacked Christianity to, to teach his own doctrine. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Jesus Christ said to Paul, here's what you preach. And this is what I want people to know, because I'm going to judge them based upon whether they believe this or not. And Paul said, wow, wow I really better get out and get this, because the whole world needs to hear it. So Paul's in the Bible because Jesus wants Paul in the Bible. And Jesus revealed to Paul. I showed you in Galatians where he said, this wasn't revealed to me by man, but by Jesus Christ. So you're not following Jesus unless you follow Paul. It's that simple. Some people still say today, but Brother Breaker, you're saved by water baptism. Oh, really? Then that would be a work. And Paul says it's not of works. Matter of fact, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17, look at what Paul says. Paul says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. <laughs> so it's not the water that saves us. You say, but it wasn't, okay, in the early book of Acts, yes, they got the Holy Spirit by water baptism. That was juice. There was a change taking place. And the book of Acts is a transitional book, and we see it changing to Paul and Paul's message. And this is how we get the Holy Spirit today, Ephesians 1.13 says when you believe the gospel, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Look it up. Ephesians 1.13. 1 Corinthians 4.15. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4.15. Paul says this. 1 Corinthians 4.15. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. The Bible says the way to be begotten, what does that mean? To be begotten is to be born. Didn't Jesus say you must be born again? <laughs> well, Paul says that the way that you're born again today is through the gospel. I'm going to misspell through on purpose. Through the gospel. Which gospel? Paul's gospel. So you're not born again until you trust the blood atonement of Christ. That's why it's so important to preach this. And it's so sad that so few do. I always look at myself as the guy who's trying to make up for what other people have forgotten. You go to many churches today, you will not hear this message. Why? The Bible says, Paul said, that in the last days, uh, people will fall away from the faith. There will be a, an apostasy, a falling away from truth. And it's sad that many within Christianity today, they've fallen away from it. And they're falling headlong into apostasy. More and more churches, every year on YouTube even, I hear more and more pre preachers come up and say, Do not listen to Paul! Paul shouldn't be in the Bible! Why Paul is not And it's just like, there's your apostasy. There's the people falling away. So if they're going to go to an extreme to not preach Paul, well, then I better go to the extreme to make up for what they're not preaching in the hopes that more people will hear the message because this is the message that God will judge people based upon whether or not, by faith, they receive the atonement of Christ and they trust it in the blood. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. Look at what Paul says. 2 Corinthians 3, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 
in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The Apostle Paul says, look, if you don't know this, if you never received this gospel, then you're lost. Where does that put all these people in the world that claim to be Christians that don't preach the gospel of Paul? It's not Robert Breaker speaking, it's the Bible. They're lost. Unless you come through Paul's gospel, you're lost. Unless you come through the message that God revealed to Paul, you're lost. You're damned. You're on your way to hell. You need to hear this and believe this and get saved. Well, that's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Apostle Paul says. I want to go a couple more verses here real quick. But there are people out there, again, that go to another extreme and they say there's no such thing as dispensations in the Bible. And, and the whole Bible, it's always been the same way to be saved. And I'm like, how could, you, how could you say that if this is the way of salvation today and this is what was revealed to Paul? This gospel of trust the blood atonement of Christ wasn't the gospel in the Old Testament. How do we know that? Because Jesus hadn't shed his blood yet in the Old Testament. How could you place your faith in something that hadn't happened yet? And yet, well, they say, well, they did. Oh, okay, well, I could go to uh, Peter and show you where Peter says that, you know, in the Old Testament they, they prophesied of the coming of Christ and of his sufferings, but they didn't understand it. And even the angels looked into it trying to figure it out, going, what is he talking about? You know, the Bible says Jesus Christ was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah. In God's mind, he knew, I'm going to die on the cross for those people. And he revealed it a little here, a little there to the Old Testament prophets, but they didn't get it. They were just scratching their head going, I don't know what that means. But today, looking back, we understand. And we can take that Old Testament and say, wow! So today, this is the message for salvation. Now, there are people that say, but, but it's going to be the message of salvation for all eternity. Oh, really? Okay, Galatians 1, 8, and 9, Paul says this, But though we are an angel from heaven, preaching any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you, then that which you have, preached, uh, you have received, let him be accursed. Anybody that preaches any other gospel than this gospel of Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, faith in the blood, Romans 3, 25, they're accursed. That means damned. That means lost. That means on their way to hell. Paul even says, if there's an angel from heaven preaching another gospel, then he's accursed. And you look at your Bible and you go, well, wait a minute. In uh, Revelation chapter 14, why there's an angel in heaven preaching another gospel. <laughs> is he accursed? Well, no, because there's dispensations. See, this gospel is the gospel for the church age. There's different dispensations in the Bible. And when the rapture comes and, and takes out us, then there will be a different time and a different place and a different way in which God deals with people. That's why in Revelation 14, um, 6, verse 6 and and 7, Revelation 14, 6, we read, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. Saying with a loud voice, okay? Where does it say, trust the blood? It doesn't. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and the earth, and the sea, and the foundation of waters. Here's an angel in heaven preaching another gospel. And this is during the tribulation period. Well, if it did it now, it'd be accursed. But once the rapture takes place and takes out everyone who's saved by trusting in Paul's message, then it goes back to dealing with the Jews, and then you got a different gospel. So I don't understand how anybody could say, oh, there's no such thing as dispensations, everyone's saved the same way in the whole Bible, and, and then make fun of somebody that preaches what I just preached to you. I'm just reading the Bible. But I want you to get a hold of how important it is to have Paul's message. Get saved today, because if the rapture takes place and you're left behind, you got problems you got to endure to the end. you got a different uh, a way that you have to get to God. It's by not taking the mark of the beast, it's by having your head cut off. Now, let me close with this, Ephesians chapter 6. I try to give this message in the spirit of love. I do not hate you, I love you, and I want to see you get saved. That's why I explained this. People might say, well, you're attacking my religion. Well, if your religion leaves out Paul and the gospel of Paul, then it should be attacked. Paul said it's accursed. So I'm not attacking you or your religion. I'm reading to you what the Bible says. If you belong to a religion that's against Paul and Paul's message, then you are in heresy. You are belonging to a denomination that is forgetting what the Bible says. And you need to come to the side of salvation. You need to come to the side of Paul. You need to come to the side of the Bible. You need to get out of false heresy. Okay? I'm not giving this message in the spirit of hate because I hate you. I love you. 
Paul said, do I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? <laughs> Paul said many times, I love you. That's why I tell you what I tell you, because I want you to know what's true. And so I try to do this because I care about you, and I want to see you get saved. Now, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. See, Ephesians 6, 18 to 20, we read, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Verse 19, Paul says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. People say, Paul shouldn't be in the Bible. Paul says, pray that I speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul says, I ought to be in the Bible. I ought to speak and I ought to preach this. Because God revealed unto me a certain mystery, a certain thing that he waited till a certain time to reveal. And this is what I'm supposed to preach today because the whole world's going to be judged on it. So, I ought to speak. The Bible tells me to be an able minister of the gospel. And that's what I'm trying to do today, is to explain to you what the Bible itself teaches about how to get to heaven. It's not your works. It's not your denomination. It's not your priest. It's not your creed. It's not your covenant. It's not what you do. It's what Jesus did for you on the cross. And if you trust that blood that he shed, then the Bible says you're given forgiveness of sins, you're justified by faith, and it's not the works that save you. It's whether or not you've received by faith what Jesus did. So I'll close with the one question. Are you saved? Do you understand? Have you received Paul's message? If not, bad times are coming. You need to get to Paul's message. You need to get saved because Paul's message is the message of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I didn't get this from man. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. So I pray you get saved. Thank you for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.